The Toyota GR Corolla. It's finally here, and yeah, you may be wondering why Toyota didn't just bring the already existing GR Yaris to the US. Well, there's a good reason for that. During a presentation given to us about the new GR Corolla, Toyota said that the brand's president, Akio Toyota, said that the GR Yaris wasn't wild or wide enough for the United States, which kind of makes me feel cool and fat at the same time. So yeah, Akio apparently told the GR team to make a GR model for the US that was wilder and, yeah, wider. I mean, I have gotten a little wide, I'll admit that, but I'm working on it. My name is Omar and I'm out in Salt Lake City, Utah for the first drive of the GR Corolla. So, a few years back, Toyota basically had no fun in their lineup. It was all about the Prius and hybrid versions of everything they could think of. But somewhere along the way, specifically 2007, the Gazoo racing team thought enough is enough. Besides doing some real race things, Gazoo was involved in the development of cars like the FT86, which was jointly developed with Subaru. It's now called the GR86. Then, in 2019, the Gazoo team joined forces with BMW to resurrect the Supra. However, in 2020, the first Toyota-produced GR-branded car was launched, the GR Yaris. The performance version of the Yaris is built at the GR factory where they apparently don't use a conveyor belt-style assembly line. Instead, GR vehicles are built at stations with a more manual assembly style. Unfortunately, the GR Yaris was not sold in North America. Which brings us to the GR Corolla, the second GR branded vehicle that's produced by Toyota at the GR factory, and it will only be sold in North America. In this video, I'll give you a quick tour of the performance focused Corolla. We'll take a look at what's under the hood. I'll talk about how much it costs. I'll give you a tour of the inside along with a closer look at the outside. And then I'll take you for a spin and take it out on the track. I haven't been on the track in a manual car in a while, so don't make fun of me. All right, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Let's do this. All right, first up, let's talk about what's under the hood. You've got a 1.6 liter three cylinder turbo making 300 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. The extremely track focused Marizo hits 295 pound feet of torque. The only transmission choice you have is a six speed manual with rev matching, which yes, you can turn off so you can do your heel toe thing. But yeah, if you don't know how to drive a manual, you can't get the GR Corolla. That said, you have three trims to pick from, including the core, the circuit edition, and the track focused Marizo. And according to official data from Toyota, the core and the circuit will do zero to 60 in just under five seconds at 4.99, which yeah, is cutting it close. Toyota says that the Marizo is slightly, just slightly quicker doing 60 in 4.92 seconds. So that matters. Now I'll test that time out when I get the GR Corolla back home for a full week today. We're just out here for a limited time on the track and around the track. Now all GR Corollas come with four drive modes, including Eco, Sport, Track, and Custom. But the coolest trick of the GR Corolla is the GR4 all-wheel drive system that lets you adjust the torque distribution between three settings, including 60-40 for everyday driving. You've got 30-70 for a sportier drive on the track and 50-50 for a more competitive track focus setting. Now, one thing that I think is important to point out is that the core model gets an all-wheel drive open differential, but if you go for the circuit edition or the Marizo, you get a front and rear torsion limited slip differential that'll give you better cornering but you can get the front and rear torsion limited slip diff on the base model if you throw on the performance package, which brings me to how much the GR Corolla costs. The base GR Corolla core, which will hit dealerships first in November, will carry a starting price tag of $35,900. The circuit edition and the Marizo will arrive in spring 2023 with the circuit starting at $42,900 and the Marizo starting at $49,900. Again, if you want the front and limited slip diff on the core, you can add on the performance package for $1,180, and that will also give you cool red brake calipers, which are standard on the circuit and the Marizo. That said, let's get into talking about the exterior. First of all, I'm really glad this comes in a hatchback, and yeah, this thing looks super sharp. I personally always thought that the regular Corolla hatchback looked really sporty and was always waiting for a true performance-focused version of it. My favorite angle is the back, where you have this awesome three-pipe exhaust system. Now, something interesting about what's going on over here, First of all, you don't have any fake engine noise. The center pipe remains open when you're just chilling and when you're driving up to 20 miles an hour. Once you pass 20, it closes and then reopens when you hit 4,500 RPMs to reduce back pressure to give you some good sound and quick acceleration. 
But yeah, let's do some revs and hear how that exhaust sounds. All right, so the back of the core model gets a lip spoiler while the circuit model gets a sportier looking spoiler. By the way, keep in mind that the circuit edition will only be available as a limited production model in 2023. The circuit edition also gets a carbon fiber roof, a hood with a vented bulge, and it just looks cooler. But the core doesn't look bad either. All of the GR Corollas have wide fender flares and overall it just looks beefier than the regular hatchback. The front end also looks sharp with a dark matrix grill, as Toyota says, and obviously the air takes are functional right here. You get standard LED headlamps, you also get standard LED taillights on all trims of the GR Corolla. And all of them come standard with 18 inch wheels that look really dope. On the core of the circuit, the wheels are wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. The Marizo gets stickier tires, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. So how much does the GR Corolla weigh? The circuit weighs in at the most at 3,285 pounds, followed by the core at 3,252 pounds. And the Marizo weighs the least at 3,186 pounds because it gets rid of the rear wiper. And no, it's not because the rear wiper weighs 100 pounds, come on. Which brings me to the inside. The reason the Marizo weighs less than the rest is because it gets rid of a lot more inside like the rear seats. So if you want to drive around your friends or use this as your Uber, don't get the Marizo. The Marizo also gets rid of the rear window motor and switches and it also knocks out the rear speakers. All that getting rid of stuff totals to 100 pounds of savings between the circuit and the Marizo. Now the core model comes standard with fabric seats that have a GR logo on them and they look really cool. They're definitely comfortable and really well bolstered. The circuit upgrades to suede seats with the Marizo getting a mixture of suede and leather. Of course, all the seats are manually adjustable since this expensive sporty Toyota is still based on a budget model. The Marizo and the circuit also get a Marizo signature shifter, which is wrapped in leather on the circuit and some nice suede on the Marizo. Now, if you're looking for some everyday comfort like heated front seats and a heated steering wheel, those are standard on the circuit. If you want the heating game on the core, you'll have to add on the cold weather package for $500. The Marizo gets none of those because, you know, it's all about that gym life for the Marizo and cutting weight. And all of them come with a single zone climate control, no dual zones here. Oh, and all of them also have a bunch of red stitching everywhere because, you know, that's what the sport life calls for. Now, tech-wise, all the GR Corolla trims come standard with a digital gauge cluster display that shows you a bunch of performance-focused information. It's nice and sharp and has a pretty cool GR startup animation. Check that out. All of them also come standard with an 8-inch touchscreen display. You can't get it any bigger than this. It houses Toyota's new infotainment system. It's pretty straightforward and nothing crazy. You get standard wireless Apple CarPlay and standard wireless Android Auto. Navigation is part of a subscription service called Drive Connect, but you don't need it since you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And while we're here, let's talk about the driver assist tech. You get Toyota's Safety Sense 3.0 as standard, and that gives you everything you need and more, including adaptive cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, and lane tracing assist. You get all the collision detection systems. The GR Corolla also gets blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and hill start assist. Camera game wise, the only angle you have is a rear view camera. You don't get 360 here, which is understandable. Sound system wise, the circuit comes standard with an eight speaker JBL sound system. On the core, if you want to upgrade to that system, you'll have to add on the tech package for an extra $770. This will also give you a wireless charger for your smartphone located right here. Hop in the second row of the GR Corolla and you're working with 29.9 inches of legroom. I'm about six foot tall, that's my seating position. As you can kind of see, it's not bad, actually. I thought it would be much less than this or much tighter than this, but it's actually not bad. And the seats are actually pretty comfortable back here. Cargo space-wise, you have a total of 17.8 cubic feet behind the second row. And of course you can open that up to much more with 60-40 split rear seats. All right, before I give you my opinion on how it is to drive the GR Corolla, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'll have to show all of you. You have six cup holders in this, two right there behind the handbrake, and then you have one on each door, one right here and one on the other door over there, and then you have two in the center armrest. Here are what the keys look like to the GR Corolla, same old Toyota key, but on the back you have a GR logo right there. I don't know if you can see it, right there. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. A little economy, but not bad. Charging game-wise, in the front you have a wireless charger and a USB-C port, depending on the model you go for. On the core, I believe that's available with the tech package. 
Rear passengers are working with one USB-C port and a cigarette lighter charger right there, and they can place their phone right here. That's nice. Let's do an indicator and horn sound test. Indicator first. Pretty simple indicator right there. Now for the horn sound. How does it sound? Let's take a listen. Yeah. Not scaring anybody. It's all right. Dang, I just realized I never gave you guys fuel economy numbers. You get 24 miles per gallon combined, you have a 13.2 gallon tank. All right, let's go. So driving this out on the road, it feels pretty great. Like I said earlier, I've always wanted Toyota to do something really exciting with the Corolla in the United States. But yeah, as a daily driver on the road, this feels pretty awesome and pretty well balanced. I currently have this in the 60-40 torque distribution setting. So Honda just announced that the new Civic Type R will make 315 horsepower. So this is 15 horsepower slower, but again, this is not just a horsepower battle. So we'll have to wait and see how this stacks up against the Civic Type R when we get to drive that one and put it next to each other. Now I'm not out on the main roads with a bunch of traffic, so I can't tell you how this will feel if you try to take over another car, but with the amount of power and quick acceleration that I'm experiencing right now, I don't think this will have much of a problem. And it feels great, it feels really well balanced. This shifter is very, very easy to use. You have short throws, and just the driving experience of this thing is really solid. Handling wise, it's great. I can't complain at all. My stuff is sliding around, whatever. But yeah, you downshift, you have rev matching, which I know a lot of you out there hate. I don't mind it as much. It lets me focus on where I'm putting the car rather than trying to heel and toe and figuring out what's going on there. But this on the road is gonna be an outstanding fun car to drive on a daily basis. The brakes feel really solid. You will definitely enjoy pushing this around. Now, since I haven't driven the Civic Type R, I can kind of compare this to the Golf R. When it comes to that, this feels pretty similar. The Golf R is a little bit quicker and a little bit sharper and maybe just a little bit more aggressive, but this as a JDM sports car, it grips. It grips really, really well. Actually, I would say this kind of handles a little bit better than the Golf R. I think the Civic Type R definitely has something to worry about when it comes... Oh, there's a fly in the car. <laughs> Ain't stop. Oh, this is good. The fly is enjoying itself too, apparently. So what I consider dropping money on this, again, I'm driving the Marisa right now, so this one probably grips a little bit better because of the tires, but I've driven the Core one today too, and that felt amazing as well. So... For a starting price tag of around $35,000, you will have lots of fun. The Circuit and the Marisa that I'm driving here are limited edition, so if you want a well-equipped Core Edition, or the Core, the base model, that will cost you around $38,000 if you throw in the performance package and if you want a wireless charger and heated seats. This fly is killing me right now. But yeah, if you want those things, you're looking at around $38,000. And at that price tag, I still think the Corolla GR is gonna let you have a lot of fun. Honestly, I'm really surprised at how good the grip is on this thing. Again, this is the Marizo, but the grip is great and accelerating after you take a sharp turn feels awesome. Now, I'm also out here driving the Supra manual, which is a more powerful car and probably a little bit more of a fun car to push around, but I'm having more fun in this. But that said, let's go out on the track. Go out on the track, right. Well, in the few hours that I had filming the GR Corolla, I quickly set up my gear for a track run and well, this happened. I know, it's embarrassing and I apologize, this feels like hardcore amateur hour for me. And what's worse is that my manual driving skills on the track were much better than I thought. But hey, I did give you guys a good idea of how it feels to drive the GR Corolla on the road, which is where a lot of the buyers will spend 99% of their time anyway. That said, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the GR Corolla's track attributes while showing you some awesome clips from Toyota. First of all, this thing is incredible in the corners. It really hugs the asphalt tight and the confidence it gives you when it eats those corners, it just makes you a better driver. However, I will say one thing, the GR Corolla has quite a bit of understeer, it doesn't like to oversteer, and that could very well be due to the GR4 all-wheel drive system. Now, I'm going to play with those settings when I get this back at home for a few days, but my feeling from whipping this around on the track is that it likes to grip more than it likes to slide. The steering feel is great, the shifter is really, really precise. It definitely offers an exciting driving experience throughout. Again, I honestly feel that the GR Corolla handles better than the Golf R. 
The Gazoo team really went to work on this thing and gave everyone that wanted a performance Corolla something to smile about. Now, would I buy this over the Golf R? Well, the Golf R starts at around $44,000. And while everyone is up in arms about the GR Corolla starting at $50,000, it doesn't. I did a whole pricing breakdown video on this, so check that out. But like I said there, a nicely equipped core model will run you around $38,000, which is $6,000 less than the starting price of a Golf R. Of course, the economy interior of the Corolla is still here, and that's where you'll notice that $6,000 difference. The Golf R definitely feels more premium inside. But hey, at least this has physical controls, unlike the Golf R where everything is touch sensitive. So yeah, I think a part of me would probably prefer the GR Corolla if I was looking to save some money. However, don't forget the new Civic Type R is on the way and that is also a pretty outstanding daily performance hatchback, which kind of looks like a sedan now, but it's still a hatchback. So we'll see how that stacks up against these two. Until then, I'm just happy that we're still getting cars like the GR Corolla, especially in a world where we're moving full speed ahead towards electric vehicles. So enjoy this while it lasts. Either way, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Peace.